This is Dr. Andrew Earls of Wright Water Engineers, and this video will explain how to calculate the water quality capture volume, also known as the WQCV. Before we jump into calculations, it's helpful to understand the technical basis behind the water quality capture volume. This is a table from Volume 3 of the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual that summarizes the number of events that we have in the Denver metropolitan area that fall into different precipitation ranges. There are approximately 75 rainfall events in Denver in an average year. 43 of these events are less than 0.1 inches, a trace, and these are not enough precipitation to cause runoff. Another 22 events are in the range of 0.1 to 0.5 inches. Small events like these carry the bulk of stormwater pollution over the long term, so managing these events is critical for protecting water quality as areas develop or redevelop. The WQCV in the Denver metropolitan area corresponds to a rainfall depth of 0.6 inches. This is what we call the 80th percentile storm event because it represents 80% of all runoff producing storms. This is a plot of storage volume on the x-axis versus the annual percent of runoff captured on the y-axis. This is from a study by Ben Urbonis and Dr. Larry Rosner that evaluated stormwater capture volumes across the country. Ben was the chief of master planning for UDFCD for more than 30 years, and Larry was one of the originators of the stormwater management model, and most recently a senior professor at Colorado State University. When Ben and Larry looked at rainfall and capture of stormwater across the country, they found curves like these. The curves vary by region, but all of the curves have a characteristic knee. That's the red circle here shown for the Butte-Montana curve. Each of these curves has a similar point of inflection. This knee is a point of optimization. Below the knee, there are significant gains in terms of annual runoff captured from increasing the amount of storage provided. Above the knee, the benefits of providing additional storage diminish quickly, and there is little return in terms of additional runoff captured to justify the costs of additional storage for water quality. Given that background, let's examine the equation developed by the Urban Drainage and Flood Control District to calculate the water quality capture volume. The first things to note are the input parameters and units. The WQCV has units of watershed inches. To convert to an actual volume with units of length cubed, you can multiply by the drainage area. The next variable is the A coefficient. This is an adjustment factor that takes into consideration the drain time of the stormwater control measure. Shorter drain times have smaller A coefficients and result in smaller water quality capture volumes. This is because of more efficient routing through the control measure with a shorter drain time. A coefficients are shown on the table on this slide. This is a table from the Urban Storm Drainage Criteria Manual, Volume 3. The final input parameter is the imperviousness. Be sure that you express this as a decimal fraction in the equation. If you enter a percentage, you will get some crazy results. Imperviousness is usually measured from aerial photography or site plans using AutoCAD or GIS. In some cases, users may want to apply this method outside of the Denver metropolitan area. This can be accomplished by multiplying the calculated water quality capture volume by a ratio of the mean storm depth for the area of interest to the mean storm depth for Denver of 0.43 inches. Note that the 6 subscript in D sub 6 for the mean storm depth refers to the storm separation time in hours that was used to define discrete storm events. Do not confuse the mean storm depth with the WQCV depth. The WQCV rainfall depth is 0.6 inches, not 0.43 inches. The 0.43 inches is the mean storm depth, while 0.6 inches is the 80th percentile storm depth. The figure on this slide is from a study by Driscoll in 1989 that shows mean storm depths from around the country. As you can see from this slide, the resolution of the mapping is not great. In addition, the data are somewhat dated because in many places we now have an additional 30 years of precipitation data. If hourly or daily rainfall data are available, the mean storm depth can be estimated from local gauge data or other published local data. This is a good way to determine the mean storm depth locally. 
You can also do local calculations based on gauge data to determine your site-specific water quality capture volume if you live outside of the Denver metropolitan area. Now that we've gone through the method, let's do an example. For this example, let's assume that we are designing a bioretention facility for a watershed that has an imperviousness of 60%. We also will assume that we have a watershed with an area of a half an acre, or 21,780 square feet. The first thing we do is to select an A coefficient based on the type of stormwater control measure and the drain time. For a bioretention facility, the drain time is 12 hours, and the A coefficient is 0.8. Now we can plug in our imperviousness of 0.6 or 60 percent into the equation with the A coefficient. When we calculate that, it gives us a water quality capture volume of 0.19 inches. To convert this to a volume, we multiply by the watershed area and divide by 12 to convert from inches to feet. When we apply this unit conversion, we get a resulting water quality capture volume of 343 cubic feet. This concludes the water quality capture volume video. I hope that this will help you with calculating the water quality capture volume for your own projects.